right, that clock says 6.15. Are we at 6.15 now? Or not on the computer. Not on the computer. All right, I'll talk slow. But we have um, posted this meeting on three public places, right, and on the website, right, and emailed interested parties so we can move forward with a properly warned meeting here. And um, we have the prior meeting minutes of... Um, November 14th, which I was not here for those, so that's up to you guys to approve those if you, um, if you choose to do so. I read and do approve of them. Do you want to second it? Yes, I'll second that. I read them too. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay, we got those. And then we had a um, November 29th uh, select board meeting minutes. Um, that was um, an emergency meeting called for some time sensitive issues because the regular select board meeting was not properly warned and so we did not have it. So um, I approve of these minutes. I didn't have any changes. Did you? No, I didn't. I read it. Uh, yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. We got those guys. And um, the um, first list on the um, new business is to review the treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. Nice, thick. Nice, thick one? Yeah. That's yeah. a good, thick one. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, um, thank you for putting this together once again. It's good to keep tabs on things. I, I didn't find anything super scary in there. Almost halfway through our year. That's yeah. scary. That's yeah. scary. <laughs> no. Um, income was up. Income was up. So... We did digest a little bit of it, picked out the happy parts. Looks fine to me. Yep, so I'd move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can sign that one if you want. And we have um, here um, asking for a letter of support for a... Um, select board in conjunction with the park committee is submitting a grant to the vermont urban and community forestry program which will address the need to maintain protect and preserve the trees located on the park the grant also addresses the need to prepare for potential infants infestation of the emerald ash tree borer it's a one-to-one -one grant the town is requesting the maximum amount allowable ten thousand with a town match of five thousand and um, the match will um, take into consideration volunteer hours, time that staff assist with the project, and donations of services. And um, I move to approve that application. I second that. And that letter of support for the application. Yeah. I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. So bring your volunteer shoes with you. Yep. <laughs> we got to do that match and volunteer time. Yep. Does that need a signature or just a... Do you need a signature on that, Lois? It's not quite ready to that signature. It has to go on letterhead. It has to go on letterhead. Okay. I think we're a little follow-up with that, Doon. I think the reason why we're doing that early is because the grant is due before our next meeting. Mm -hmm. And so we just wanted the letter of approval going forward so, so we, we could can... get it in yep. in, in time for, yep. the, for the grant application. Cool. All right. Thank you correct? for working on that, yeah. Lois. All right. And then we have a request for uh, the winter event night before the night before Christmas. And that is um, a little bit, um, well, you did it last year, right? And then it kind of, this was based on the porch of the cafe, the new porch. And it did kind of spill out into the street. So would you like to speak about what your thoughts are on that? Yes, and I have a map of, I, I believe you might have printed one, but I have a printout map of I don't the have a map, but yeah, why don't you bring that up? We're oh, asking map. that part of Kirby Drive be closed because the people spill over onto Kirby Drive, and that's a little dicey. Um, we checked with the church. We could have people enter from Route 100 up the Federated Church and then around the side and just come up, 
um, part of Kirby Drive. Um, the people on Kirby Drive have agreed to that. The church agreed to that. We're hoping that you would agree to that. The, the board would agree to that. Um, obviously, if there was an emergency, we'd clear everybody off of Kirby Drive. Um, we would hope that we could get some cones and some sawhorses to, to block the entrances and post signs. And we would provide the signs. And no, no. Evidence A. You've been to court. Just once. And what's the time frame? Oh, the time frame <clears throat> would be 4.30 to 6.30. The show is from 5 to 6. So, yeah, and you have all uh, the... Sounds like all the people that use that road, which is not a massive lot of people. No, um, and they've all you know, agreed. Do it. I don't have any problems with that. Yet. Do we have input from the fire department? Long thing, get them out of the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's definitely gonna have to have, if there's fire down there, people might have to move in a hurry. Mm -hmm. We can do, what do you think about if we do an announcement at the start of the show, should there be an emergency, we would ask everybody to Ooh, no. could get up there yeah. and start oh, blowing your arms. Up to the park or, or, you're not yeah. setting up yeah. tables on the road. No, right? this no. is going to be no, standing room. Yeah, right? No, no, no. Yeah. just people. I don't. Yeah, I, I think you could scare them out of the way yeah. pretty quick. I mean, we, we kind of wish they wouldn't be in yeah. the road, but they did spill over there last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think last year they spilled onto Route 100 a little bit too. Mm -hmm. We'll so. work on. <laughs> Putting them over to Kennedy Drive would be better than Route 100. Right. Kirby. <laughs> Kirby, Kirby, yes. Kirby I know what you meant. <laughs> so. I'd, I'd move to approve that. Yep. I second that. All in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Yep. Thank you. Thank um, you. Where could we get the sawhorses and cones? I'll make sure you get them. I think we have some in the old firehouse, and I'll, I can do that for you. Thanks. I can. Make arrangements. And I'm not Sue Lovato. She was going to be here, yeah. but I can't. What day is that? Thanks, is that everybody. This is not bad. Um, this um, <laughs> must be better than part, huh? It's cheaper. Fine, don't so bad. 1223. 12 12.23. <laughs> All right. Okay. We got. Um, Moving right along, we have um, Catherine. You're going to talk some about um, clarification of the rebuild Rochester yeah. fund. I'll stand up here so people don't have to frame the next. So I'm Catherine Shankman, and uh, it's come to my attention that maybe it'd be a good idea to make a formal clarification of, the, of what Rebuild Rochester Foundation is. It was established in the aftermath of Tropical Storm Irene. Uh, there was a relief committee formed basically to help flood victims and we received donations and then distributed uh, to applicants. And I think the Federated Church was one of the 501c3s uh, that offered their umbrella to receive tax exempt donations. Peggy McKinley's brother, who is an attorney, helped to establish the nonprofit Rebuild Ro Rochester. And so that's how we came about. Uh, there are some folks on the board of directors that were actually part of the original relief committee. Uh, in 2014, we expanded our mission uh, to be able to go beyond flood relief. Our mission statement is to assist in the rebuilding and revitalization, no, the revitalization and sustainability of the Rochester area community, colon, it's individuals, its organizations, and businesses. And that's what we do. We uh, the, the basic part of our work, or the largest part of our work, is to receive um, applications from people in financial crisis. Uh, we don't do a regular you know, help. We do basically a one-time help or whatever is needed. We have two social workers on our board so that when an application comes in, if there are other uh, funds that would meet that request, we go and help people access those funds. 
as well as the Rebuild Rochester funds. We also, as the mission statement says, I have on occasion also worked with certain community uh, efforts. Uh, the first one was on the fifth anniversary of Irene, 2016, August 28th, and we uh, sponsored in partnership with area businesses like Harvey's, uh, a day-long event um, in which there was entertainment and tributes and food. Uh, for those of you who might remember, it was a grand day. We also dedicated the River Brook Park and uh, so that was in 2016, and then the pandemic rolled along in 2020, and uh, we were very integral in receiving tax-exempt donations to help stand up a grocery delivery service that helped the uh, people in quarantine and in, and in isolation. Volunteers, Julie was part of that. People would call into the town office, and that would sort of trigger the system. Volunteers would then call the person who needed assistance and get their order, fill the order, deliver the order, and uh, Rebuild Rochester was part of that whole funding mechanism. And then in um, 2020, we uh, went to, uh, we agreed to go with uh, CB Oil and uh, Maple Soul to establish a warmer heat fund for CB Oil customers that need financial assistance in paying their bill and that's still an ongoing fund. And then in 2021, we received tax exempt donations towards the required matching fund of the Vermont Community Development Board grant, planning grant that funded our feasibility study and continues to fund some of the work that has been, is being done by the Rochester High School Repurposing Committee, which is <clears throat> kind of on behalf of both the school board and the select board, uh, exploring options for the repurposing of that building. And now we are raising funds to heat the building over the winter. Not something we anticipated, but is uh, a necessity to keep the building viable. So we just wanted to explain who we are and what we do. We are not uh, connected directly to the repurposing of the high school project which apparently there's some people who've been a little bit confused by that. But we do accept tax-exempt donations and that encourages larger donations uh, and has been helpful and very useful to the community and as you can see, multiple efforts. So, are there any questions? All right, oh yeah. What's your budget right now? What kind of funds do you have? In, What's our hand? budget? And what kind of funds do you have on hand to meet the needs that you, um, well, yes. what we do basically is we have a cap of $1,000 per applicant. And if we run out of that money, then we're not able to. But, you know, I have to say there, have been, there are some very generous people in this community who regularly donate up to four times a year. And so we're grateful. And that really happened during the pandemic where our visibility uh, was greater. Uh, and. So we're grateful for that. We're grateful for everybody who supports the work that we do. And, you know, let's just face it, what would we do without our community volunteers? I mean, we have a volunteer government. We have volunteers without which the engine, they're the engine of this community. They really are. I would hate to think what would happen if we didn't have volunteers. So I want to put a plug in for volunteerism because it's so essential to small towns. And if you want to know um, more about what the work that we do, then please be sure to call me. We're listed uh, under Shankman Books or the Shankman, or you can get to Julie and she can get to me too. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Remind Catherine about that downstairs stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, next on the agenda, we have a discussion about the uh, access to Rogers Peak land, the 700-something acre plot of land up there that um, um, Nick Darbaloff has bought. And is he here on Zoom? Yes, he is. Yeah. Hey, I am, dude. You are. Yeah. Do you, um, you um, got the floor? Do you want to speak your mind there? 
Sure. I'll just uh, first off, I, I apologize. I meant there. To, I meant to be there in person, but did something in my back last week, and it, it has taken longer to heal than I'd hoped. Um, as you know, we've looked at accessing the, our chosen home site from a variety of uh, different approaches, from South Hollow Lane, from Jerusalem Hill Road, and from Bethel Mountain Road. None of them are easy, and and all of them have trade offs. And I think we've discussed some of those. Um, at the end of the day, I think, as, as I've indicated to, to all of you, the, the access from South Hollow Lane would, would seem to be our preference. Um, and there's a couple of key benefits fr from that approach. Unlike Jerusalem Hill Road, there are no steep grades, which uh, very much worry my wife and, and frankly, in winter, worry me. Um, unlike Bethel Mountain Road, there would only be modest land clearing and, and minimal uh, really disruption of the sort of wild nature of the land. And then unlike both Jerusalem and Bethel Mountain, uh, South Hollow would allow power to be brought in, which we would do underground. Um, at the select board meeting on August 22nd, it was suggested that we explore um, coming in via Jerusalem Hill and then veering southeast down the vast trail and then doubling back and coming up to our chosen home site northwest, uh, up the up the grade. Um, I have looked at this on a number of, of topo maps. I think it's 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 uh, it's an interesting approach, but I have yet to actually uh, physically explore it. And I've I've promised Larry Strauss that uh, that we will do so, and that path may offer a slightly lower cost, um, but it will clearly not allow us to bring in power, and and it also doesn't get us uh, doesn't get any resolution to the demands that anyone visiting the house in winter or early spring would need a, a suitable four wheel drive vehicle, given the steep sections of Jerusalem Hill. Um, so that's that's where we stand. Um, I know the request was made that we, if we were to come in via South Hollow Lane, that we would uh, we would be asked to improve the road to a to a class four standard. And um, after discussing that with, with Ray Harvey, who's been extremely helpful as we evaluate our options, we believe that upgrading the legal trail uh, to class four is something we'd be willing to do. My understanding is that this would require proper sloping of the roadbed and, and uh, the placement of culverts at appropriate intervals, but we would, we would do the work to understand the requirements and meet those requirements if that were a possibility. So I think that um, conversations that we've had, or the um, the thought was to improve it more to a class three road than a class four road because the class four designation does not really lend itself to to maintenance. The town is not responsible for maintaining that road, and it's um, if we're going to go through the work to do that, I think that a higher higher level would be would be necessary or be or be desirable um, I, I, I think that it is important that you follow up with Larry on on exploring the the access from Jerusalem Hill because from my conversations with him it, it seems like there is quite a significant um, log road in place that that would bring you almost directly to your, your desired building spot. I know you haven't had a chance to, to hike that, so I'd, I'd encourage, encourage that. Um, no, I'd, I'd hope to, and I'd, 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 I'd hope to have hiked it actually t today if, I, if, if I'd been able to get up there. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, again, I, 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 I do not want to discount it. I do want to leave an open mind, and um, mm -hmm. I will have one when we walk it and take a close look. Um, I do remain concerned about uh, sections of Jerusalem Hill to, to anyone without a four-wheel drive, and I also would love to bring in power. I'm actually in the solar business. I understand that uh, the property could be developed off-grid, but I also have an electric car, would, would, would hope to have a number of electric appliances and, and electrify as much as possible. And so off-grid would, would not be inexpensive. Uh, so that the fact that, that uh, South Hollow allows power is, is a significant 
benefit. Um, so I, I, as for class three or, or four, I mean, I think that, I think it could be said that, that class four could be achieved with um, significantly less disruption. I, I also think that uh, if we did class four, it is fully understood that it would be on me to maintain it and plow, of course. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll let others offer thoughts. I got a real issue with it for a couple reasons. Number one, it's a trail. It sets a different precedent for our community than what's ever been set before. So I'm opposed to South Hollow Lane, to be honest with you. When I originally heard your proposal, I was I thought about it as a plus to make it a class three. My name is Frank Severy, by the way. I didn't introduce myself. But, um, but as I thought more about it and looked through the rules, I think we're set, the town setting a bad precedent by allowing a, a trail to be turned into a different class of roadway in that section because we have several other miles of trail in our community that are unaccessible to us as a road crew or as a town to maintain and we'd have to hire outside people to maintain that if we got a similar request from somewhere else to address a different trail. So I feel strongly that we shouldn't allow a trail to be upgraded in that section in that distance um, for that simple reason. And that's just me as a board member looking at it that way. However, I am open to Jerusalem Hillside because it's a better access for the town to turn their vehicles around. We presently turn around almost to your property, um, which would require a slight upgrade of, of pro approximately maybe uh, two tenths of a mile at the most, I would think of upgrading a uh, class four section of road to uh, part of a trail to get to your land um, that would be uh, a plus for the community to turn our, our present equipment around when we plow and grade and so forth. So I am open to the Jerusalem Hill side, but I am not open to the South Hill Hollow Lane side. So there's a, which would mean that, that um, in essence, it would not be, it would then, power would pretty much be out of the question. That's correct. Or less, that's up to the power company, really. That's not my call. <laughs> That's a Green Mountain Power thing. I mean, if you were going to bury a power line from South Hollow Lane, you could, you could still approach the property from Jerusalem Hill, and, and if you're going to pay for the expense of burying a line, you could still bury a line down a legal trail. I mean, yeah, that wouldn't be you know, changing the nature of that, no. that trail. Um, you'd want to to make sure that that main oil tank culvert's not going to give way and, and, and <laughs> rip your rip your line out, but but that would still um, I would think that would be I haven't thought about this before now, but it seems like that wouldn't preclude that if you're going to trench a line. But um, obviously, if you if you're if you are uh, working on the road and doing power simultaneously. That would make there more sense. A, yeah, there is a yeah. huge cost benefit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where to go here. I mean, this is a 700 acre property, and um, you know, we we purchased it really with the goal of of having a nice home site. Um, yeah. And to to basically come to the conclusion that we can't feed a, a home site with power, and that we have to come up a very steep road to get there is is tough. I, I, I guess you know. Part of me wonders whether, well, I, I, part of me wonders whether we need to rethink the whole thing. And um, I don't know. I have to I have to give it some thought. If if I mean, we we we, we took a very close look at coming in via uh, Bethel Mountain Road. There is a there is a possibility there. Dune, you had said to me that you prefer that we did not do that because of the habitat disruption. I I understand that request, but again, it it. it it seems like that our hands are being tied from a number of different angles here with a very large property and a desire to build a single home. I'm not sure. Well, 
Not your you privacy. To say Pat. Hi, Nick. Pat Harvey. Um, Hi, Pat. I am related to Ray. <laughs> um, my thought on all of this is that you do have 698 acres there, um, and you seem to be pretty set on where your house would go. Have you considered placing your house site in a different area that would be a great compromise for you and access and power out of all of that property there's there's only one spot for you to have a house is I guess my question oh that's a good question Pat um, and and we looked uh, we looked extensively across the property and I can't say that there aren't other other possible home sites and that that is something we we might well consider um, but but I guess I don't know whether it resolves the issue. If we came in, if if we wanted to come in and have be, be looking north or northwest towards the Green Mountains or the Northfield Range, we would still be coming in on South Hollow. Uh, we would just be a lot closer than the home site is currently. One of the things I, I also promised Larry and uh, more than more than willing to, to commit to is that we would um, we would come in to if, if we were to improve the legal trail coming in on South Hollow, we would come into our land and at the landing, which is pretty immediate um, on the eastern side or on the left, if you will, as you're coming in from South Hollow, we would then um, immediately enter our land and go up on a private driveway. So we would we would cease improvement of the trail at that point, and we would not go all the way through to where the, the small cut road is currently. So it would be about, uh, let's take a quick look at the map. Yeah, it would be it would be about half halfway to the home site is where as you enter our land, we would we would cut up uh, to an old logging road and follow that as our driveway, cutting cutting in half the amount of um, legal trail improvement. And so I guess, you know, in a sense, if, if, if we were to pick a home site uh, on the northern edge of our property, it's it, from, a, from a trail, from a legal trail improvement perspective, there'd be no difference. We'd still be coming into our property improving the road to our property and stopping there. That was just the thoughts that I had on it. Yep. Unless you came in so, from Bethel Mountain Road somehow, but you own yeah. property all the way to there. So that requires right. a negotiation with neighbors up that Hooper way. Hollow, I, yeah. I also thought would have a certain amount of access as well. And there is power down right. Hooper Hollow. We don't abut Hooper Hollow, I'm afraid. So it's the same. It's the same issue as it is on Bethel mm -hmm. Mountain Road. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. we realize yeah, that. Yeah. 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 You know, per perfectly willing to, to explore this. I, I think we had sort of had our sights set on a on a uh, north facing home site. Um, we picked one that has both, um, and you know, I, it, I think we're pretty confident it would be it would be gorgeous. Um, and we would be interested in, in looking at other home sites that might be north facing and, and not have southern access. Um, but again, I, I don't think it resolves the issue much. Um, we still, yeah. still be faced with the same set of, 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 of issues to resolve. Right, especially if wanting to have power is, is um is directing your decision um, pretty strongly. Yeah, and, um, I mean, I'm in the solar business, has, so as, as I noted, and and the, the, the building a building a solar plus storage uh, facility that would support a home site with electric vehicles and other electric appliances would probably be uh, of a similar cost to bringing in power. Um, and, and we've sort of been through that costing exercise and, uh, I would, you know, I, I would probably still do a small amount of solar on the, on the property as it is just because that's, that's who I am and that's what we'd want to do, but it would be a much, much smaller 
effort than it would if it was an off-grid approach. Well, at, at the way it stands now, the 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 board would, you know, or the town represented by us, we'd be um, supportive of the access from Jerusalem Hill, which would be minimally expensive. I'm just talking about physical access to the property here. And we're um, not excited about the um, access from South Hollow, which would also be much more expensive for you to do that. I mean, we are interested in, in um, having people come and, and build homes here. We're not trying to discourage that from happening. It's just the, um, um, we're also things. looking at protecting the assets for the town as a whole. And uh, in conversations we've had with the Two Rivers out of Quichi Regional Planning Commission, they were very um, discouraging of, of, of treating a, a legal trail this way and, and, and cautioned us for just um, giving that up um, very, very um, casually. Well, I, I, I guess I would say, yeah. I, I um, again, our, our goal here was to build a home site. It was not to uh, develop this land. And, you know, we would be, we would be willing to commit that, that we would never seek a subdivision along that road if it were improved. In fact, I would commit to, I, I understand the difference between major and minor subdivisions and uh, within Rochester and, and would potentially be willing to offer or forego my rights to a major subdivision if you were to consider allowing an, uh, an improvement of that road. So I guess I guess I would ask you guys to, 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 to Give at least a little bit of, of further thought to this. If you stick with your decision as you as you've uh, laid it out this evening, then I have no choice but but to respect it, uh, or I suppose choose to fight it. But that's not really the, the the that's not really what I had what I'd envisioned in in becoming a member of the Rock, Rochester community. I, oh, I would, would love to have, have to this. That, I, I would love to have this land. Uh, you know broken up as minimally as possible and I would be willing to 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 uh, put something on the table that limits my ability to, to to break it up if if the select board were willing to give further consideration and I guess I guess I'll leave it at that because if if all I'm left with is a uh, is an off-grid site coming in off of Jerusalem Hill um then it's a then it's a land acquisition that you know I, I might hold on to for some number of years and and then let go of because we weren't able to do what we'd sort of dreamed of doing. But there's still options here, still willing to look around. I, I guess I would just ask all of us to have an open mind and and know that I'm willing to make some concessions if if the board were to reconsider. Well, the next um, step I would see to to formally entertain the the thought of reclassifying that road would be to for you to petition us to to um, entertain that thought, and then, which would then be a process of notifying the, all the abutting landowners and and townspeople and 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 you know take input from more than just the three of us sitting here at the table and, and continue that that conversation. So I don't think we want to just, you know, right. chase you away by any means, but it's a definitely um, a, a deeper conversation to be, to be had. Is this section of, let's just say, either South Hollow Lane or Jerusalem um, a type of road that we receive funding from VTrans for. We get so many, so many miles of our roads are subsidized a little bit by VTrans. It, it would if, if we raised it to class three. Then it would jump onto it even it, though the, the homeowner is the one maintaining it. He wouldn't be maintaining no, it if it was class three. It would be we, all and, on us. Yeah. And if we do anything like that, we'd have to 
but we'd have to have it as class three. We wouldn't want to just maintain a class four road like that. That's just not a not in the cards. It Here's wouldn't, I can figure wouldn't out. be would be advantageous yeah. Yeah. for us to do that. Well, Nick, um, I guess we'll, um, you know, continue the conversation. I would encourage you to um, to um, reset that date with Larry Strauss to walk the um, walk the property some more, because from his reports, you have the the bulk of a, a driveway to your house site virtually in place from that from the um, the west side, but it's. Um, it sounds like, well, I mean, half the people around here use four-wheel drive vehicles to get to their homes. It's not an unusual usual thing. I live in town, so. Even I have Understood, but, it, but, but I also think that, um, I think we're all aware that, that Jerusalem Hell is not, is, is not for the faint of heart when the conditions are, you know, when, when there's extreme weather conditions or, or not even extreme, when yeah. there's just serious yeah. weather conditions, it's, it's a tough road. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just, it is what it is. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of people end up in the Murray's front yard on Bethel Mountain Road, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. But um, it sounds like the um, the power, access to power, is, is a big, big, um, big aspect of the considerations here. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is, it is for us. And I think that, because, uh, well, because I, 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 really love not to buy a fossil fuel vehicle in order to ask mm -hmm. access uh access our property i you know if 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 the if the reclassification or if the improvement to class three standard um were something you felt were important if if that's if that's a different deal than class four then I guess that's something we could consider, but but Frank, did I hear you say that that was not something you would support either? I I don't really su support it turning to a class four from South Hollow Lane. I don't support that at all anyway because of the the precedent setting that you're putting on the community for the other parcels of trails that we have that are inaccessible to us as a road crew from this side of the mountain. We have several. <coughs> Excuse me. We've got about seven miles, almost seven miles of trail in town. A lot of them are unaccessible to this side of the hill. They're on the other side, on the Bethel side, the Randolph side. Um, and we have to pay other towns to maintain those and, and our roads there, but they lead to a trails that we own uh, that are public rights away. And if a similar request comes in, similar to yours, and requests that they use a trail to access their property to build houses on, we would have to accept the same thing as we would accept with you on a, on the South Hollow Lane side. And I and I worry about that as a precedent-setting thing, which down the road it could very well be and i'm not really looking forward to that type of thing it puts the town in a bad light so I, so whether that's class three or class four right just upgrading a trail altogether is is tough and i think on talking in talking with two rivers and in explaining the situations to them they were under the feeling that the possibility on Jerusalem Hill was much better because it improved our town access for turnaround for our vehicles. Presently, we turn around up there in a guy's driveway, which is very cumbersome for a, a tandem truck that's quite large and, and has a plow on it and the grader when they have to grade up there. So we're in situations where we're trying to improve things. And I just, I just see that South Hollow Lane thing as a, as a precedent-setting thing that I don't think the town should, should go forward with. And that's where I stand on it. But there are rules going forward that you can, uh, can uh, uh, take into consideration of petitioning the town to uh, getting voters to sign that petition to upgrade that South Hollow Lane to make it a road and and uh bring it back and and we would have to listen to what townspeople 
have to say, and then we'd have to vote accordingly. So mm -hmm. you do have options if you want to pursue the South Hollow Lane more that way. I'm, just, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to take up any more time, but but I will just ask one last question, and that is, is the is uh, the notion of uh, legally limiting the development of this 700 acre parcel a value to the town? Actually, if we're going to improve the road, it would be in our interest to have more than one house up there to, to up the tax rolls. That's not, that's, you know, that's, um, it's not that, um, you know, not that, um, yeah, so that, that's, um, that's, that's not so much. Do you have a question in the back? No, you're just stretching. Okay. Larry Stress. So I, I just wanted to clarify a, a, a few points, just in a big philosophical view, um, and it echoes a lot of what you've already said. Um, you know, again, uh, echo, echoing in our own town plan, um, the town plan is, and this is a quote from the town plan, uh, the town plan is intended to act as a vision for the community and um, in regards to the trails uh, somewhat echoing what Frank has been saying trails this is a quote from the plan trails are used exclusively for recreational purposes and are not intended for vehicle access therefore they are not maintained and I, I think the underlying so let me just s start by saying that I'm biased, um, and uh, and so I'll, I'll admit that I'm biased. I would um, definitely prefer that you know the road beyond my house you know remain as is, um, but I'm not. Uh, I'm, I I think I'm in favor of Nick uh, being able to access his property and build a house. Um, and I think if the select board is of a mind, which they seem to be, of working with Nick to find a way to help him access his property, you know, I'm in favor of that. Um, I guess how I see it is um, that on the South Hollow end, uh, you're talking about reclassifying or considering reclassifying half a mile of road, uh, which requires significant amounts of road improvement, whereas um, on the uh, Jerusalem end, you're talking about 530 feet from Stewart's house uh, to the uh, to the vast trail. Um, so, I mean, there's just no comparison on the. Uh, you know, uh, the work on the north and south ends of the road. Um, now, I mean, the, the power issue, I can't really speak to the power issue. Um, I, this is the first time I've really heard, really heard it talked out. Um, uh, as has been mentioned, there is a very viable uh, potential driveway access uh, along the vast trail and then up an existing woods road um, to the potential house site. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, you know, I just think that there's, you know, from the town's point of view, uh, if they are interested in considering reclassification, uh, a reclassification on the Jerusalem side just seems to make, you know, uh, more, much more sense. And, you know, to get from the valley bottom to the top of a hill, um, you're going to have to go uphill, uh, whether it's, you know, Bethel Mountain Road or Jerusalem Road. It's, you know, it's the same elevation. Um, and it's going to require a four-wheel drive, and I, I'd also throw in four good snow tires. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any comments on this? Nick, thank you for um, for speaking with us. And um, 
I guess um, encourage you to think and explore more, and and we're open to input and um, feedback from community members and each other. So I know it's okay, not, yeah. not exactly what you were hoping to to hear, but that's um, trying to work with you here. No, I think it's it's it's, it's pretty it, it's it's disappointing because. Um, you know, it's a large, it's a large acreage and, um, obviously it would have been nice to have had six months before pulling the trigger on acquiring the land to understand exactly what was and wasn't possible. Um, we will keep exploring, but I would also hope that everyone keeps open minds and we'll just see where this goes and we will take a very close look at, um, uh, we'll take a very close look at the at the Jerusalem Hill access that we've been discussing. Yeah. All right. Can I just, um, there's somebody on Zoom that I think was trying to say something, Ethan. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt. I've never been to one of these. I didn't know when I should talk. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, now it's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, fantastic. I, I live on South Hollow as well. I'm one of Larry's neighbors. Um, yeah, the first thing I was going to say, Nick, is you, you're going to want to plan on getting a four-wheel drive, probably a pickup truck, regardless of which way you come in. I have to and use my get out out <laughs> all of some days, and that's flat. So uh, I, I just wanted to just chime in one thing I hadn't heard anybody talking about yet, and uh, it, it goes along with the, you know, uh, leaning towards not using South Hollow as, as an access, and, and that's the current use of the trail, both by us townspeople and also it's a, I spent a lot of time up there that's an enormous wildlife corridor I think we all know as soon as you put in a road which improves and increases vehicle access and the frequency of the vehicles going up the road the wildlife disappears and right now there's a lot of moose that live up there I've been routinely getting a cow with twins as well as bulls and bears and all sorts of stuff up there and it's just something else to think about when we we go to upgrade these trails we're not the only ones using them there's also the snowmobile so so <laughs> all right all right um, well thank you very much i appreciate your time yeah thank you yeah to be continued um so the next item on the agenda is a discussion about the um, Granville First Response Services to the town in the year coming forward. Um, Our um, speaker did not show up tonight. The speaker did not show up tonight. No. We had invited him to come and, and yep, we had invited talk Sergeant. about his plans. Yep. Yep. Is that Dan? Yes. I can tell you it's been fantastic to see that those first responders come. I live across the street to someone who's had to use them a lot, and they are there before the ambulance comes. I'm very grateful for those first responders that come down from Grandpa. Well, that's, um, that's good to hear because we'd also heard the opposite of that, that they are um, in the last year or so they've been that's our question to Dan was how often they do respond to calls that they get um, heard that um, it was not always the case that they were the first on the scene if if at all if at all yeah and so we we're that was our concern and hoping for some clarification but um, this uh, this branches out of discussions had at the budget and finance committee meeting so so I guess we will... Um... Martha on Zoom has something, if that's okay. Yes, sir. I just want to make a quick comment that I would also say something very complimentary about them. Um, um, I had a really bad fall. I have to walk with a walker, and I, I can't get up if I fall. And I had a bad fall in the middle of the night about six, seven weeks ago. And um, fortunately, I keep my cordless phone in a little bag attached to my walker, and I was able to call and they did come and, and got me up and they were very kind to me. I anyway that I was just, you know, very pleased to to be able to have that option. 
So that's just my comment. Sorry. Yeah, that's good. That's why Thank we're yeah. talking about it here. To have input. Yeah. Not seeing to yet. Okay, so I guess we'll... Um, I'll reach out to him again tomorrow and follow all right, up. Let's see if we can't get him to come in. Uh, the next item on the agenda is um, another land access <laughs> situation with the Sherman Family Trust property update. And I understand you were um, talking with their local road expert. Did he shed much light? Um, yeah, I... Uh, Bruce Welling has done extensive research on on our roads and especially on our trails and and, and uh, um, class four roads, mm -hmm. which the Sherman family lot is located off from Jones Mountain up by you, and and it is a town road according to Bruce. He's researched it, found that. The town had legally thrown up the lower half that goes down in the bingo, mm -hmm. uh, down near the beaver ponds. It goes downhill to Bingo Road. And the upper part was was considered a class four. And at some point in time, and I'm not sure when that point was, the select board had given permission to put a gate there, and which makes it a pent road. But the gate can never be locked. It has to be open because it's a public right-of-way. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the Sherman property has right-of-way to that <clears throat> on that pent road. But the gate needs to be unlocked. And that's all I've researched. And then I'll, we'll have to draft a letter to send to the Sherman yeah. family that states that we've looked at this and, and that they have access through that. As well pent, as, pent road as well as the other landowner that yes act, yeah yes that they all have access through that on the pent road yeah, yeah. but it's it's technically that gate should never be locked yep yeah. but at some time they must have got select board permission to put a gate up there so yeah. making it a pent road mm -hmm. just keeping track cars out of there and whatever but but it is a, a public right of way. All right. Do we have anyone um, from the library on Zoom or in the room? Um, no. Mm, not not on, Zoom. on Zoom. Not on Zoom. No. And I don't see in the room either. Um, got any um, more highway talk you want to do, Frank? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not really, but <laughs> uh, John and I are going to have to attend a Zoom meeting tomorrow for uh, CDL uh, drug testing and all that. Mm -hmm. That's a requirement, so he and I are going to do that tomorrow. Uh, we will be meeting with uh, uh, Greg Russ from the White River Partnership. They apparently have funds available that they want to use on the Riverbrook Covert over by uh, Sally Lamphere's um, and redo that at 100% um, coverage mm -hmm. for that they're going to pay for that. So, um, so John and I will meet with them Wednesday and that's about it. And I think Kristen has got some uh, Paperwork we need to sign for the uh, what's that for this grant? In better, aid. better roads, better grant road program. Grant. Uh, better back roads. Better back, better roads. Don't better say better back roads. roads. That is uh, associated with a Rogers Brook. I don't think it's my turn. Yet. No, it's it turn. Yet? Sorry. No. Okay. Do I, did I get ahead of you? So. <laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, I guess also. Um, in terms of the update on the um, the West Hill Bridge, there's, oh, yes. um, on January 23rd, there's going to be an informational meeting with um, Brian Austin, is it? Mm -hmm. no, and no, Chris Brian. Patrick. Yes. And I may Chris have Patrick. misled you. I thought it was going to be this month. Sorry. That's my fault. <laughs> Sorry. The whole neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. It is. Brought everybody else. <laughs> well, it's good to see you before the... It gets snowed in. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, we get blown out. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
but it but it is is a go. So yes. they're pleasure. telling us go for it. So happy days are here to come. Yeah, we hope to see it. No. Well, the original plan was to start in the spring and yeah. and Complete. be done by October. October. So Waiting for anything. Martha, yeah, I'm sorry to bother you, but um, I didn't hear what Frank, the meeting on January 23rd is going to be about what I was writing as fast as I could. Um, um, the, the hill at the, um, the bridge at the bottom of West Hill, or the hill above the bridge <laughs> on the river. <laughs> so the meeting is about the bridge at the bottom of West Hill? Yes. Yes, replacing it. On January 23rd. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Not to dive into this whole thing that's going to happen in January, but there will be a temporary bridge or something that's going to yeah. give us access. And yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we okay. have acquired all the right of ways for that. So that should, you know, that part's all done with. It's just a matter of them putting it out to bid, I think, and selecting someone going forward and. To okay. do the job. Good. And that was the holdup last time was they didn't have a temporary bridge. Right. <laughs> right. right. Or so they said. You know, I don't know <laughs> if they did or didn't, but that's what they told us. All right. Um, Terry, you got anything exciting on the utilities front? No. No? no. Truck? That's fair. The body is supposed to be there today or tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then we gotta go up and meet with them. The truck is up there, the hindbrake. Filled it in. Wait for the body, and they're gonna take it right in. They said last week that there's a good chance we could have it by the end of the year. This so, year or the end of next no, year? No, this year. This year. <laughs> but we'll have, once we get it, we'll probably have. It'd be in service, but it won't be in full service because it's going to take quite a while to help it. It's got to give us some thought before we drill holes. <laughs> I know. All right, thank you. Um, I talked with Jeff Gephardt. He's not, um, I don't believe, oh, he is here? No, he said he yes. wasn't going to be here. All right, welcome, Jeff. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, yeah, I got hung up on a phone call and missed the first meeting I was supposed to be at. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, Kristen has been helping me. We're going. I'm going to uh, get you uh, at the very end of the year here a total on expenditures by building or asset account, what have you, uh, both electrical and fossil. Electrical's done right now, but. Uh, we get deliveries from CB oil almost daily uh, at this time of year. So uh, when we have uh, their data in the balance of the year, I'll get that uh, to you guys so you can see where you are at the midway point. Um, I did have a conversation with Zach Casey at uh, Green Mountain Power, and um, he had told us that they had changed their mind and they were going to go with one DC fast charger and two level twos. Uh, in the discussion I had with him last week, he said that uh, oh, they're going back to two, two DC fast chargers and two level twos. The, um, uh, also the date, uh, he thinks the materials that they uh, have on order and back order um, he should be getting in March, but he's cautioning us on uh, uh, electric vehicle demonstration day kind of event uh, to wait until late um, May or early June uh, to schedule that kind of a, an event. Okay. I also have uh, done a takeoff on uh, the uh, side of the uh, library and we'll put together a couple of estimates for what I uh, think it needs. I'm kind of guessing at uh, what's behind the wall there. Um, you know, we, you know, there isn't anything open enough that really tells us uh, the circumstance in that wall cavity. Cool. Okay. And um, I guess another note on the um, the energy front is the um, the 
Resiliency zone. Resiliency zone for the um, the project, the microgrid project, and um, Severy's pit up there is moving forward. We got the um, what? No, I thought that was Martha there. No. no. Um, so we got the the forty five day notice list attached. Anyway, it's um sounds like they're moving forward, and that's kind of exciting. I mean, you guys know what that's about, I believe, but I'll just I'll summarize it very quickly. Green Mountain Power is is moving forward with putting in what they call a, um, making Rochester Village a resiliency zone where there'll be a um, energy uh, a solar array with battery backup that will, so if the grid goes down, the um, essential center of town here will have some backup juice for do we know how long? No, I, I don't know how long it, it will be for. A couple for. days, right? A couple of days, though, yeah. Days. Possibly. It, it depends on the depends solar, on you know, how much solar they, they yeah, get yeah. during that time. It's, right. it's basically, uh, it isolates the village so that Green Mountain Power can basically use the energy that they have to power Rochester Village with any time they deem fit during peak season mm -hmm. or whenever they have a spike, they can shut the village off and run it off the battery system with the solar. Um, so that's what the, they're doing and it's moving forward slowly, but it but, is set to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but that's um, kind of a nice asset for yeah, the it, town. Yeah, it'll really be a good thing down yeah. the road. It's, yeah. it's a step in the right direction. It kind of fits our town plan mm -hmm. and, and our, what we're driving for in the yeah. future for the carbon footprint. So I think it's a it's a plus down the road. All right. Um, <clears throat> now, Kristen. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. So we've received our second reimbursement for the CDBG grant um, on the 8th. It was twenty one thousand eight fifty two. That was nice. Um, for the Howbrook design, um, I submitted and received our first reimbursement for that of $7,537.50. Um, West Hill, we have the bid proposal packet that's like 260 pages that we've been asked to review. Yeah. Um, so if you guys want to you know, hang out and read, it's fun. <laughs> I can get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the Forest Service does, in fact, have the replacement bridge, so they're mm -hmm. pretty stoked about that. Um, that's it for that. They're going to be updating some dates, right, Julie? And then they said that they would be getting back to us, but it looks like it'll go out to bid end of January. Um, maybe early January. Well, early depending January. on when we get it all. Yeah. yeah. Sometime in January. Yep. Um, I have a paper up there for you to sign yep, soon um, for FY24 Better Roads grant, and that's for Rogers Brook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been working with Rita and Cricket on that quite a bit lately, so that's that. And I submitted um, my first requisition for grants and aid on Fisk Road of 15305 I did that last week with the help of Ashley. She's awesome. Um, I completed the portal work that needed to be done and then submitted for the reimbursement. So we'll see how that goes. That was scary. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but she was awesome. Um, and that's it for right now. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's great. And one question. Mm -hmm. We did, uh, they did ask yes. for the West Hill Bridge. What powers the or what is the pole on the easterly what, side of West Hill? What's running up what's the running poles up those, on the easterly uh, side? The, what is that? Like, is the only thing is tel tel uh, telephone. That's okay, it. Do you know who the yeah. provider is? It's it's uh, EC fiber. EC, EC fibers in there consolidated. plus uh, consolidated. Uh, consolidated. consolidated. Okay. okay. It's it's consolidated. The, had the poles, so it's consolidated poles. Yeah. Okay. We, just we need definitely to let need them to let them know that, so we'll update with that. Yeah. Good luck with that. Green Mountain Power stops across the brook there by the trailer. Okay. I didn't know if we could ask that here, so thank you. All righty. <clears throat> um, we 
I think we covered a lot of old business in our new business, so we don't have a lot in the old business category here. Any um, public comment? Anyone out in the world or in the room have any additions they'd like to bring to the meeting? Zoom has definitely dwindled down, but they seem to be all set. Everybody's muted and happy by the looks. All right. Well, um, oh, Martha, so oh, you just did a last second wave. Okay. Oh, she's good. No, she's, she's good. good. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> then um, I will um, entertain a motion to adjourn. I second that. Yeah. All in favor? All right. All right. Thank you all Bye, for guys. coming out. Have a good night.